What would the NFL free agency be without a little tampering? We'll talk about the two teams being investigated thanks to some loose lips. Apple TV's The Dynasty came out, and Robert Kraft wasted no time throwing Bill Belichick under the team bus. We'll show some of the backlash and some of the more petty minutia in it. I felt like I got duped. Plus, the Chiefs might leave Kansas City, Tyree kills a madman, and we still don't have a catchphrase. Roll it! Nope, that wasn't it. Welcome to Shut Off Football. I'm Jeff Stoltzfus, that's Kevin, and it's time to do the news. The Eagles and the Falcons are being investigated for tampering. Oh, they're so tampery. Let's start with the Eagles, the gangrenous bald patriot of the sky. On day one of free agency, they snuck Saquon Barkley out the back door of MetLife Stadium to the greener and debatably less murdery confines of Philadelphia. But ruh -roh. A Penn State coach said Barkley spoke to Eagles GM Howie Roseman in the 52-hour window prior to the legal tampering period. That would be a big no-no. Both the Eagles and Barkley refuted this by saying, Nuh-uh. So good luck proving that one unless there's, like, evidence. The Eagles were allowed to speak with Barkley's agent, but not directly to Barkley himself during that time. Which seems stupid, but rules is rules. Barkley claims he didn't speak to Roseman. He said, Roseman communicated through his agent and that the Penn State coach misinterpreted it. The Falcons, on the other hand, gave zero fucks about subterfuge. Kirk Cousins, who got $180 million from the Falcons and God knows how much in Cole's cash, said he spoke with Falcons head athletic trainer and director of player personnel prior to the legal tampering period. Cousins even offered to call Bears receiver Darnell Mooney and pitch him on joining him in Atlanta, which would mark a second violation for the team by even more tampering. Cousins signed with the Falcons 90 minutes into the free agency period. That's less time than it takes to watch the Barbie movie. They were barely singing I'm Just Ken before he negotiated $100 million guaranteed? I don't think so. Nobody actually believes that. But you're not supposed to say out loud that you circumvented the rules because once you do, Commissioner Beefsuit will be forced to bring down his blonde hammer. The Falcons could be fined or very likely lose a draft pick. Travis Kelsey and Patrick Mahomes have partnered with hospitality group Noble 33 to open a steakhouse called 1587 Prime. It's a combination of their jersey numbers and Optimus Prime. I'm sure it will have the finest collection of murdered meats and the wettest wine. It's said to have multiple private dining rooms and a meat display, which is what I call it too, and contains subtle nods to their accomplishments, which I assume means the bathrooms will include Raiders urinal cakes, Kadarius Tony will be a waiter who never gets your order right, and Andy Reid will literally live there. It's gonna be a fantastic addition to the Kansas City area made awkward as hell after the Chiefs leave the city. That's right, the Chiefs are threatening to leave Kansas City over a sales tax. Chiefs President Mark Donovan said, if the upcoming vote to extend the already existing sales tax that benefits the Chiefs fails to pass, the team might leave Kansas City. Which sounds like a threat, because it is. Donovan, seen here weighing the balls it takes to extort taxpayers, said they'd have to consider all options, including relocating. The Chiefs are looking at an $800 million renovation to Arrowhead. The Hunts have already agreed to pay $300 million of that. They need the tax revenue for the other $500. The tax is only three-eighths of a cent. For every $100 you spend in Jackson County, 38 cents goes to the Chiefs. Just 39 cents. That's less than a small cup of coffee but it can make all the difference in the world to the people of this village. Ask for more. What is Apple TV's Patriots 10-part series, The Dynasty? It's not quite the unified circle jerk for Patriots fans I was expecting. There was the usual verbal fellatio for Tom Brady. We worked for Bill, but we played for Tom. And all it is is Brady, 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 Brady. But Bill Belichick doesn't come off as the brilliant leader he's typically painted as. In fact, it's the opposite. Bill tore Brady's head completely off. There's things that are done that can't be undone. It does seem like it's a kind of a smear campaign everywhere right now about Belichick, wherever you look. Former Patriots Rodney Harrison, Devin McCourty, and Rob Gronkowski took issue with how Belichick was portrayed. They act like the last three or four years because the Patriots have struggled that Bill can't coach. Bill made some mistakes and he wasn't always the nicest the, or the purest guy. But at the end of the day, he always did whatever it did, whatever he had to do to make the team better. 
He set down a $100 million quarterback when no one thought it was popular and started Tom Brady. In the series, Robert Kraft blames Bill Belichick for losing Super Bowl 52. I credited Bill with that loss. To be honest, my head coach is a pain in the tush, but I was willing to put up with it as long as we won. Bill benched cornerback Malcolm Butler moments prior to the game, a move he's never fully explained. Hey, Bill, why didn't you play Malcolm Butler? Kraft said, What has been told to me is that there was something personal going on between Bill and Malcolm that was not football related. Okay, my first thought was that somehow they ended up in a three-way and accidentally locked eyes. And Bill, being the competitor that he is, refused to back down, making for a terrifying ordeal that broke Malcolm's inner spirit and left him a withered husk of a man, unable to eat, sleep, or poop right for a week. That was my first thought. But I find it very dubious that even the sluttiest, most devout Patriots fan would make those two Eskimo brothers via a pair of human finger cuffs. Why doesn't the YouTube algorithm recommend our show? Back to Kraft. That's a pretty damning statement on Bill. And also, pretty unaccountable. Someone told Mayor McCheese it was personal? Who? That guy sounds like the only one with some answers. Get him slash her slash they them on camera. Also, I don't believe Bill has a personal life. He comes out of the box to watch film and coach football, and then he goes right back into the box. Like a football vampire. What if that's what vampires actually were? Not all sexy and super powered like the movies, but like disheveled hoodie wearers that mumble and smell like old cheese. There's one more tiny thing from the series, but this time, it's not what was included, it's what wasn't. So we have a situation here in this Apple TV Patriot show that is a level of petty that I have never seen before. They edited out the word Foles from, from the touchdown call by Al Michaels during the Philly special. This is the call by Michaels. Obviously saying the word Foles because he's the one who caught the touchdown. They're going to snap it, and it's Trey Burton who throws caught Foles touchdown. Caught Foles touchdown. So what does the Apple show do? They're going to snap it, and it's Trey Burton who throws caught touchdown. What? Caught touchdown. They edited out the word Foles. Now there's a lot of wild conspiracy theories on the internet. Most of them propagated by Aaron Rodgers. But for whatever reason, this did happen. Police were called to Tyreek Hill's house in January for a domestic dispute. He was allegedly screaming at his wife over a post-nuptial agreement she refused to sign. She said he bullied her and shoved an unlit cigar in her face. Police investigated, but no charges were filed. Hill has been in the news a lot over the past year. He's been getting women pregnant like hotcakes. He's only been married for a couple months and is already rumored to be getting divorced. Which is probably why there was an argument about a post-nuptial agreement. He also maybe punched a dude on a boat and broke a plus-sized model's leg. If you were to measure his recent behavior, it would be on a scale of one to Antonio Brown. One being normal and Antonio Brown being Antonio Brown. Which it's starting to sound like Tyreek Hill is. So if you have him in fantasy football, my advice would be sell before he's throwing shirtless peace signs on his way to bankrupt an arena league football team. Former Chargers wide receiver Mike Williams paid a visit to the New York Jets last week, and one super fan decided the best way to keep him in the building was a ham sammy. A Taylor ham and egg sandwich, which is apparently a North Jersey staple, was waiting for him thanks to one fan via DoorDash, and the Jets' Twitter account was Johnny on the spot. It worked! All it took was one ham sandwich and $15 million, and Mike is now officially a Jet. But the sandwiches kept flowing. Later at the Knicks game, another sandwich. In fact, the Jets were still receiving sandwiches days after and had to tell people to stop. Congratulations to Mike Williams and the New York Jets. But I will admit, I'm a little jealous. This story awakened something in me. I've had a lot of goals come and go in my life, but now, my number one goal is to get myself into a situation where people try to persuade me with free food. I don't know what that might involve, but I'm excited about the possibilities. A stranded motorist on the interstate spent 20 minutes trying to flag down help before someone finally pulled over. Who was that good Samaritan? Anthony Richardson, quarterback of the Indianapolis Colts. Richardson gave him a ride to the auto parts store. However, the driver didn't recognize him. It wasn't until he asked him what he did for a living when Richardson gave a wry smile and said, I'm captain of your dreams, bitch! 
Then he popped it on two wheels and straight off a cliff. Okay, that didn't happen, but it would have been pretty rad. Instead, Richardson gave him the $200 cash he had on him and then drove him back to his stranded vehicle. That's just nice. I guess I'm a Colts fan, he said now, not realizing the sadness that that would bring him in the coming years. If you're a fan of football-related merch, I now have a merch shop. Go to foosprints.com, that's F-U-S prints.com, or find a link in the description below. It's mostly t-shirts right now. Maybe you'll find a fun shirt for yourself or a punishment t-shirt for one of your fantasy football league mates. I make a lot of graphics for this show, and I love fun t-shirts, so I figured, why not? Let me know what you think. For those who need to get their football fix, heads up, the UFL season begins Saturday, March 30th, 1 p.m. Eastern Standard on Fox. Will I do any videos about it? Who knows? I've done videos on the USFL and XFL before, but I really don't know what's coming. These videos are like my children, in that they're unplanned. Thanks for watching Shut Up Football. Leave your comments below, your kind comments, for fuck's sake. Say hi to your mom for me. We'll see you next time. Peace! Check the mic and make sure it sound right, boy. It sound right, boy. Hospitality group, Noble 30 through. 30 through? That's not even a number. Interesting choice. Brain. Bradio? Ha ha ha! Tommy O'Bradio. Anthony Richardson, quarterback of the Ina Indianapolis... Can't even say that. In Indianapolis. Rename your city. Just get rid of the India. You don't need it. You don't need it. It's not in India. That doesn't make any sense anyway. He is off the top of the morning, Tommy O'Bradio. This is my steak hole.